Hey guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits, and today I'm going to show you how I edit and touch up my portraits inside of Lightroom. Alright, let's do it. So this is the photo we're starting with, and we're going to show you how I get from here to here. Let's do it. So, starting with our white balance. First thing I'm going to do is adjust the white balance as per normal and just trying to get the skin tones where I like them. Typically I find Lightroom makes the skin tones a little bit too red so we're just going to take that down a bit. And we're going to adjust our exposure using the plus minus keys. Do a little bit of basic contrast adjustments and shadows highlights everything looks pretty good for me for right now so we're going to go down to our tone curve. Basically what I'm doing first is I'm doing what I would do with any image. I'm just adjusting um, the basic basic adjustments first and then we're going to worry about the actual touch-ups. So what I've done is I made a little S-curve. I've done a point in the highlights, point in the shadows, point in the mid-tones and I've taken the mid-tones up which is just brightening her skin, separating her from the background a little bit. I'm not going to go into the red, green, blue curves but if you want to play there you can doing something similar. Next up I'm going to go to the HSL panel and I'm going to play with the tones to get her skin where I like it a little bit more. So as I said, typically the skin tones tend to be a little too red in Lightroom, so instead of this, we're actually going to take things very slightly in the other direction. And you can see our skin is getting just a little bit less magenta, less red. And these are all subtle adjustments. So what's happening is little by little, I'm building a house, right? So one brick might not be much on its own, but once you add in the next change, the next change, the next change, you wind up getting something that's really quite nice. So I'm just going to make those little adjustments. I did notice earlier, one thing you can do is grab this little dot here and put it on any area of the image. So in this case, her eyes. And it'll show you, you can see now the yellow is highlighted when I go over that spot. Or when I go over her skin, it's mostly orange. Now you can click and drag that spot and it will actually just adjust the hue in that area. So if you want to get some really interesting effects, you can do that. We're going to go a little bit more subtle here and probably leave those close to where they naturally were. But what I am going to do, since the eyes are in the greens and the yellows, I'm going to take the greens and just turn the saturation up a little bit. And the yellows, yeah, maybe not so much the yellows because those are in the skin tones too. Great. So we've gone from this to this. Again, very subtle changes. We're going to keep going. Split toning, I'm not going to worry about that here because there really isn't much for toning going on in this image. We've got her skin, her eyes, and this black-gray background. So we don't need to worry so much about changing and manipulating those colors. I want it to be natural. Sharpening, we'll just leave that as is. Noise reduction, adjust that as necessary. This was shot on a camera with ISO 200, so it really doesn't need any noise reduction. Lens corrections. Normally I'd have this on, but because this is a DNG file, it doesn't actually need it. It's already got it embedded. And lastly, before we move on to our touch-ups, I'm going to just adjust the camera calibration. So this is how Adobe Lightroom interprets the colors within your image. Are the shadows more magenta, or do they lean more towards green? Are the reds more red, or more towards orange? So, we're just going to play around with this to get the nice... Nice skin tone we're going after. I'm going to take a little bit, again, of magenta out. Then I'm going to take my reds and I'm going to take them a little bit away from red and towards orange. Not too much. I'm going to take the saturation down in that area. Not so much, but generally skin doesn't have a lot of saturation in it. Cameras oftentimes mix this up and add too much, so we're just going to take a little bit out. And our greens are going to kind of Take that, and take our saturation down just a little bit. And blues, I like to do this. It just lets me see what's going on in the image. Take it back to our starting point. And I don't think this really needs much of an adjustment. We can maybe take the saturation very slightly up just to add a little bit of kind of blush to her face. Perfect. So we've gone from here to here. Looks pretty good, right? Now we're going to go and touch up the image using our adjustment brushes. So these brushes are from the Genesis pack by Signature Edits. You can feel free though, you don't need to have this pack in order to edit your images. You can just copy the settings I've got as we're going and make your own brushes if you like. Or you can head to SignatureEdits.com and download that. For a limited time, we're actually giving it away for free. So 
I'm going to start using my retouching tool set. And again, her skin, for whatever reason, oops, for whatever reason, her skin is absolutely flawless. Like there are no dimples, nothing that needs to be corrected. Either her makeup was really great or she just has nice skin. So we're not going to worry about, you know, adjusting any of that skin softening, etc. We're going to work on bringing out what is already there in the photo, starting with her eyes. It's been said that the eyes are the portrait, a canvas, a window into the soul. So we're going to focus on those first. We take this iris enhance brush, which is just adding some saturation, some clarity, very slight exposure and contrast bump. And we're going to paint on her irises. And you can see how that just brings the color out. Now, one thing that I did notice is when you zoom in here, her eyelashes, her eyebrows, her nose, all in focus, but her eyes are actually a little bit soft. So I'm just going to take my clarity and my sharpness up just a little more than I would normally. Subtlety is key, so I don't want it to be too much. I'm actually going to take my exposure down just so it's not quite so dramatic. So we can see before and after. Great. Next, I'm going to focus on the whites of her eyes. You can see the color in those are just a little bit blue. Things aren't looking quite so natural. So we're going to go into our eye whitener. Um, do, 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 do. Well, we don't have an eye whitener. Well, perfect. This is an option. We can actually show you how to make an eye whitener. First, we're going to start by just brightening the whites of the eyes. That'll start doing what we want it to do already. So we'll just paint in here. And if you want to, you can actually just press O. That'll show you where you've painted so that you're not painting over areas you don't want to like this. So I'm going to press Alt to get to my eraser and just erase where I've painted. Turn my flow up here. Erase. And as you can see, the brush that I'm using really is not soft enough. So what I'm, I'm going to do is just erase that really quick. We're going to switch, turn our feather up here, turn our flow down a little bit, and repaint, but something a little more subtle this time. There we go, and that'll blend a lot better. Okay, so we're going to paint on both eyes, and what we're doing is we're brightening up the whites, and we're also going to warm them up with our temperature here. So press O again so I can see what I'm doing, and I don't want to do it like crazy, but just a little bit, let's say nine. That's before, that's after. It's just slightly less blue, and we're gonna take our saturation down and our contrast down a little before, after. Now that might be a little too far, so we're actually just gonna go point two. The last thing you want is for your eyes to look like, you know, demon eyes where they're just shining way too bright, like they have light coming out of them instead of light going into them. All right, so we've already made some good adjustments here. The next thing I'm going to focus on is bringing out the texture on this confetti. It's very interesting, and so we want to highlight the areas of interest in the image. So what I'm going to do is go to my Add Texture Brush. What that's doing is adding some clarity. We've got sharpness, a little bit of um, noise, contrast, and highlights, emphasize, shadows taken down. So it's just adding contrast, basically, and that will wind up making our texture come out a little bit more in the image. So we're just going to brush, press O again so I can see what I'm doing. Oh, and we disappear for some reason. Come on. There we go. So the parts of the confetti that aren't in focus, I'm not going to worry about trying to sharpen those up because they're already out of focus. Great. So press O again. And you can see that that's really made that confetti pop. And pretty much lastly, we're going to work on her eyebrows, her hair, and her lips. So first things first, using the Add Texture or my Hair and Lashes brush, I'm just doing pretty much the same thing. Some clarity, some sharpness, some contrast. We're just going to brush onto both of her eyebrows. And you'll see it really thickens them up. And her eyelashes here. Bing, bang, boom. You can see here's before. Here's after. So it's just done a very slight 
addition of contrast, making those features just a little more pronounced. We're gonna, while we're at it, add some of that to her hair up here. Again, I'm not gonna worry about the parts of her hair that aren't in focus, just the parts that already are. So just up here. Great, and lastly, we're going to work on her lips. New brush, and we've got a nice lip enhancer here. You always need a lip enhancer in your arsenal, right? So we're just going to paint on here. All that's doing is adding a little bit of saturation, a little contrast, bringing out the texture in her lips. Now for me, that's a little bit too far, actually, so we're just going to take it back. Subtle little changes all add up. Great, so she is looking fantastic. Our portrait before and our portrait after. The last thing I'm going to do before we call this done, I'm going to take a radial filter, and I'm going to set it to exposure here put it around her face. Why am I doing that? Well, because if you look really closely, you can see that her shoulders, the clavicle, this whole area is brighter than her face for whatever reason. And our eyes tend to be drawn to the brightest portion of an image. So what are we going to do? We're going to add a little exposure or take a little exposure away from here to make her face brighter in relationship to everything else. So we're going to press our quotation apostrophe key and that'll move the mask inside of our radial filter instead of outside. And then we're going to brighten her face up, lower the overall exposure using our plus and minus keys. And you can see, I'll just delete that, the difference. Now our eyes are drawn to her face instead of looking first down here and then up at her face. It just feels more natural. Okay, and I might take that down just a bit, the littlest bit. We want it to be subtle again. And that is our portrait image. Before and after. All right, so that's how I touch up a portrait and edit it inside of Lightroom without any need to go into Photoshop. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe for more great content and check out the next video.